Hi guys, I've got a couple of minutes and I thought really quickly, you know, watch a video and give you a running comment of uh, what goes through my mind when I watch this. So this is in Speaker's Corner and this is Sabur, who's been cranking out a lot of nonsense really recently. So I thought, all right, let me take a look and see what this video is about, which is about a, a manual, like an instruction manual, but this time for life. So let's see what he what he has to say and what my thoughts on this are. Truth is because God teaches you in the, uh, sorry, the Quran teaches you about God. Yeah, okay, this is the first thing. He already realizes that it's circular, but he is not honest enough to admit this because the Quran says that God says that the Quran says that the God says. And this is exactly the problem that we have. We don't know that there is a God. So you, you first need to say, all right, there's a God. He wrote the Quran. And now I need to look at the Quran under the premise that there is a God. OK, so it's not the other way around that um, th there is any kind of evidence for this God in the Quran or something like this. These are just claims. That's all. That's all there is. You need to believe and that's it. What you can arrive at even without the Quran. Okay, without the Quran, you have absolutely nothing. Because without the Quran, there is no God. The, the funny thing is, in Islam is, if you are a human being who has never heard of the Quran, you would never think that there's a God. Why would anybody do that? And, and yet, this is exactly what the Quran claims. That even without the Quran, that we have this fitra, that we have this innate uh, belief system that everybody thinks that there should be a God, which we don't. But they still say, well, the Quran says it, so the, therefore the Quran is right. Because the Quran says that it's right, because it's by a God, because the Quran says it. It's, it's, it's crazy. You cannot follow this. The fact that there's one God, the fact that God is... Fair. Fact. Who, who has established this as a fact? What he calls facts are claims. The, a, a fact is something that you know corresponds with reality that that you can follow in reality that you can see in reality that you can detect in reality but god you can't so it's not re part of reality is the only one worthy of worship the fact no he's not worthy of worship because just i mean you know <laughs> this is an antiquated thing that um, i was brought into this world by my parents i need to worship my parents and they said no no you don't need to worship your parents you just be kind to your parents okay cool but then they said, well, you need to worship God because he brought everything in here for you. No, no God asked me whether I want to be here. So why should I worship something that brought me here even if I hate it here? So this does not follow. That there's right and wrong. And the fact that in this life, the purpose of our life is to love God, to put our hope in. Yeah, okay. Can, can anybody see the, 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 the flaw here? Can anyone see that this is just a set of demands that is being that are being set by the Quran because the Quran says that there is a God, you need to be this, and these are the foundations. And then they build on these, um, pretending that these are real solid and, and robust foundations. They're not. They're just like soap bubbles. And, and they're, they're saying, well, these soap bubbles are really, really strong. No, they're not. Because as soon as you check them, as soon as you look at them, they burst, they just pop, poof, 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 gone. So all you need to do is just apply critical thinking and they all disappear. Trust and fear in God. So I would say the... Okay, yeah, this is going to be a funny one. Trust and fear. This is always the combination, all right? The Quran says you need to fear God. You just, you just trust him, but you need to be afraid. And this is why Islam means submission. You need to submit. There's always this element of fear. This is not a loving God. This is not some, some God who says, look, um, I'm giving you this life. I'm giving you this planet. I'm going to look after you so that you have a nice life. No, in Islam, everything is very, very different. You have a monster. And this monster is saying, listen, you better shape up. I'm putting you here and I'm testing you. And then you need to believe that when you pass the test, which you don't know what the test is, and you don't know when you fail and when you don't fail, you have no clue what is going on. But if you fail, I'm going to torture you because I created you to fail this. But even though I t created you to torture you, I will pretend that I am just, and that I'm actually quite a benevolent God, which I am not. So this is the God in Islam. Message of Islam is the number one proof of Islam. But there's something very important here. If I was to try and prove to you Bernoulli's theorem, right, or some theorem in physics or hydraulics, I would give you a mathematical formula, right? Yes. Islam 
The evidence for Islam doesn't work like that. It works. <laughs> so there are no facts in Islam. You can't check anything and you can't demand evidence or anything that is factual. <laughs> but they always claim that the Quran is scientifically accurate. But as soon as you go and take science and you <laughs> examine this, or examine the contents of the claims, they turn out to be wrong. This is exactly the point. You need to be credulous. You need to be gullible. You need to be a little bit, I don't know, a, a, a bit silly to, to first believe everything without checking it, without ever being able to check it at all, without ever having a chance of being able of checking it. You just need to believe it and then, then everything is okay. But if you don't, oh my God, then you're really going to get punished. Then it's terrible. So this is, this is actually quite useless. From you having a sincere heart, and if you're sincere, God will give you guidance. This is our belief. Well, this is not the way that it works, because if you read the Quran, it says all the time, God wills. And this is, this is the point. If, if this God wants to, he will provide guidance. If he doesn't want to, he will not. And the way that it's said in the Quran, this is where he comes with this funny formulation. It says, he, when, when he hardens your heart, this is what this God does, okay? He hardens your heart. He doesn't understand that you've, you know, you think with your brain. He thinks you think with your with your heart. And so, if if he hardens your heart, that means you can't think. That means you can't believe. You can't have emotions. You can't have anything. So you, you're a you're a I don't know a, a void monster, without a soul, without anything. And it's only when you believe in your heart, when your heart is soft and able to comprehend all this, then God is going to guide you, and then you have a chance. You still don't know whether you're going to make it. But then at least you have a chance of going to heaven, where on earth, sex and alcohol are prohibited. In heaven, all you do is have sex and alcohol. Congratulations. So it's not just about an abstract proof. It's not just about... It's not a, a pr proof, you can't have proof. Proof is for mathematics. Proof has nothing to do with, with what, what we want to do. It's called evidence. And there is nothing. There's, it doesn't matter what attribute you put in front of it or behind it. Evidence is equal to zero. Abstract or philosophical argument. Now, don't get me wrong. There are arguments for why the Quran is the word of God. Philosoph no, no, there are claims. There are no arguments because you first have to demonstrate that a God exists before you can you know, attribute anything to this God. And this doesn't happen. It's the other way around. You first need to believe that a God exists, and then you can say, well, this God created the Quran. Yeah, but hang on. Then if you look at the Quran, it's, it's a book which is so badly written, it's amazing. Like, a lot of it, not even Muslims understand. That's how badly written it is. And then it's full of contradictions, full of inconsistencies, full of mistakes. And in fact, I'm asking, show me one correct sentence, one correct statement in the entire Quran. And in the eight years that I've done this, not a single Muslim has come up with one. And what does that tell you? It tells you that the Quran is a really, really badly written book. And these people make it out that it's like miraculous. It's so wonderful. It's not. It uses letters. It uses words. It uses sentences, just like anybody else does in not a very, very eloquent way. On top of arguments, there are arguments for God's existence. But the fundamental criteria in Islam for guidance is that you sincerely ask God for guidance and you look for guidance. So it's not just a philosophical gymnastics uh, sort of uh, back and forth. Okay. It's philosophical gymnastics. It's just brain gymnastics where you're just saying, oh, I believe that there's a God and now give me guidance. What guidance? Well, it's in the Quran. Well, it doesn't, the Quran doesn't provide you with guidance. Ah, yeah, but it, it says these and these things. Ah, is that the guidance? Okay, now I know, yes, now there's guidance. When there isn't. You know, the, the, what, what is the guidance that you get in the Quran? I've asked him more than that. And he will give you a whole list of things, but if you go and look at them and tell him, okay, show me where it says that, well, then it's very difficult. The thing is, what, what can the Quran do to improve my life? It can't, because I, I don't kill. I, I don't kill innocent people. Well, in Islam, in the Quran, you're allowed to. I don't. You're allowed to, you know, keep slaves. I don't. I'm you're allowed to, um, you know, Beat your wife. I don't. So I think most Muslims who also don't do that are a lot better than their God. Oh my God, the, the, the voice of Hatun in the back.
<laughs> that is so true. She's like a soul. What, what, what would you say to, um, what, what would you say, for example, if I said, there's so many other religions out there, and it's, it's, it's difficult for me to pin down. Um, there, there isn't enough like me. I mean, I'm, 40 years, I'm almost 40 years old, and it's, it's difficult for me to research all of these different faiths and stuff. Exactly. He's making a good point, because as if there were one God, which is the claim, why is it that the Quran constantly says you're not allowed to have other gods? Well, because there are other gods. And the, the, the whole thing is, is illogical, because it is correct. If there were only one God, this is what we would know as humans. So if we go under the premise there is a God, we would know this, we would understand this, we would not require a book because everything would be in our bodies like we know, everybody knows what a smile is, so we would know what a God is, everybody would know what the one God is. But if we look at reality, we see exactly the opposite. We see hundreds, thousands of gods. So this doesn't make sense. And this is exactly the point he makes. Why am I X number of years on this planet and I still haven't researched all the gods that there are? If there is only one god, why don't I get only one single message, but I get 3,000 different messages from 3,000 different gods? I was, I was speaking to a, um, a, a gentleman from Afghanistan um, before I spoke to you. Yeah. And the topic came up about um, tests. Is that um, this life is a test yeah. from God. And I mentioned to him that I don't feel like this first test is a fair test. Right. Because if I was born in um, Saudi Arabia, it's more than likely I would have been Muslim. Right. Not, not, not 100%, but more than likely. Yes. If I was born in um, India, it's more than likely I would be Hindu. Um, I mean, what, what, what do you say to that? Um, I'd say it's exactly the point. If you, if, if you live in, in a certain region, then the God will be different. But why? If, if there were only one God, it should be the same message. Very good point. It doesn't matter where you live. That's a very good point. The way I would explain it, uh, the way I would explain it, Jermaine, is this. Every single human being, we generally follow the religion of our forefathers. That's just a general point. However, the Quran, it doesn't teach us to follow the religion of our forefathers. It doesn't tell us that. The Quran says, reason and think for yourself. Reflect upon creation. Do not follow your forefathers. Do not follow your society, your cultures, your passion. Follow your reason. And your reason is what will lead you to God. And a sincere heart is what is going to help you reach God. So you're absolutely right. Chances are, most of us in life, we follow the religion of our forefathers. But the Quran says, don't do that. Now, another book we have, have you heard of this book, The Eternal Challenge? This book is evidence for why the Quran is the word of God. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. No, number one, the Quran doesn't say that. The Quran only says that you should think about what the Quran says. You should not go outside of the Quran. So, no, and it, all it says is don't follow necessarily what you heard from the Christians and the Jews, only follow what I say in the Quran. So ignore what the others say, that's what the Quran says. Now, this book, <laughs> now we've, we've taken that apart. This is so funny, this is, so, this is one of the most useless books ever, and there is absolutely nothing useful in that entire book. These are the logical arguments, but this is not including what I said earlier, which is you need to have a sincere heart. Because someone can read the arguments for why the Quran is the word of God. Ignore it, ignore it. And you know this, right? But you know what's interesting, yeah? In life, if you, if you catch a murderer, you catch a thief, you catch a rapist, or whatever, do you think they know what they're doing is right or wrong? Or is it that they don't know? So if, if you're, um, look at this, if you're like a, a psychopath, there, there's, um, there's a part of the brain, I believe, that, yeah. um, that makes you more likely to be a psychopath, isn't it? They looked into this, so, and these people, um, they lack empathy. So if you lack empathy, you're not going to feel like what you're doing is wrong. So I would say, because the rapists feel like what they're doing is wrong, I would say, no, or no, or serial killers. What the odds are you wanting? From, so from, from a side perspective, they would think what they're doing is wrong, but inside, I don't feel like they're doing wrong. I mean, some people are psychopathic, yeah. but majority of people that do criminal things, or wrong things, they still know what is right and wrong. So you know when you, you have regret, you have... No, they don't. This is exactly the point. But it doesn't fit into your narrative, does it? Because he's exactly put his finger where it hurts most, and that is reality. Because as soon as you bring up reality and rational thinking, the whole thing just falls apart. But he doesn't like the answer. So he wants the answer, yes, they know that it's wrong, and that uh, this is why you need now the divine uh, supervisor. People who go to jail, they regret what they did. So other than the psychopaths, other than the psychopaths, most people, they know right and wrong, even the people that do wrong, they know right and wrong. And the thing is, in Islam, deep down inside, we do know that this life is short. We know that there's a higher purpose of this life. And deep down in our most 
private thoughts. Deep down within us, we do have the knowledge of God. This in Islam is the fitrah. Wow. <laughs> you know what? Okay. What's your thoughts on the fitrah? So, um, I, I do know that um, it's, actually, it's, um, it's actually science behind it. Yes, there is a role, yeah. I like that they, he's passing this black thing, but this doesn't do anything. He's still picking up the microphone that he has attached to his jacket. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know why he's passing this black box around. This reminds me of the amazing Randy who's wearing glasses. Then he takes them off and shows that they're completely empty. There's no glass inside. He's just trolling people. Um, um, I, I, think it might, I think some people, I think that might be um, due to evolution. I don't know if yeah, yeah, yeah. um we're, we're more likely to believe in in, in yeah. humans are more likely to believe in supernatural explanations to certain is that something if I'm wrong in, in supernatural explanations to determine why things happen the way they do. Like for example, back in caveman times, people um, um, thought thunderstorms were, were, were acts of God, yes. or floods were acts of God, stuff like that. They, they, these are all yeah. these, these are all acts of God in their, in their, in their way of thinking. So, um, so you can, you can, you can, the picture goes back to, to when men first yeah. start walking, walking up. Yeah. Yeah. So you know about this. This is a very interesting you raise. Darwinists normally give this answer. They say that belief in God is evolved. We evolved to believe in God. But the thing is, there's a few philosophical problems with that. Say me and you, we're both running in a forest and the bear is going to catch one of us and eat us. I stop to pray to God, you keep running. Who's more likely to survive? Why is that? So, there's, I mean, there's no reason to believe if you're going to pray to God that the bear is going to stop, is, is that the bear is going to away from you and run towards me or not, or not eat you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So from a Darwin, from a Darwinian point of view, if they're an atheist, yeah. So if anything, the Darwinian explanation for the belief in God is very poor. They try and explain it, but they don't have good evidence. Now there's another good book, and with Ali Dawa's permission, I'm going to give this to you because it's his book, but I'm sure he won't mind. This is this is known as Darwin and God, right? So in this book, basically, what Darwin says is that he believed in God even after he published the Origin of Species, because of the problem of evil and suffering. It wasn't because of evolutionary theory. So he also says there's nothing in evolutionary theory which undermines the existence of God. Now, why, why can't he remember this? Why is it so difficult for him to accept that most people who don't believe that gods exist do not do so because of evolution, because of biology, because of things like that? It's, it's something that they seem to have in their mind that Darwin only explains one single thing and that is the origin of species this this it just shows the complexity of the variety of different life forms that we have on this planet and the claim is in the quran that adam was handcrafted by this this god as as is the case for jesus so just because these two people were not you know, born and, and were not properly, normally, naturally, um, you know, created. That is because they say, well, this is why the whole of theory of evolution needs to be rejected. We see some changes in the existing forms, but only in the existing species. They will, they will never change, from, there will never be a change from one to the next because it's not allowed that you have, an, um, like, that humans are a type of ape is not allowed, this kind of thinking. And because it's not allowed, it can't be that way. Because it can't be like that, you're not allowed to say that or think that or in, in, in any way, shape or form, acknowledge it. And this is the problem in Islam. It stifles your thinking. It stifles your critical thinking. People are taught what to think, and this is what they think. But they're not taught how to think. This is the problem. This is what I see again and again and again. If I come with, with an argument they've never heard before, it doesn't work. They fall apart because they're off their script. And this is the problem that um, I see again and again and again. And then as soon as somebody comes with a different argument, he always falls back on the same thing. And he always starts quoting and throwing around names, what others are saying, as though this is important. These are his thoughts. Okay, so yeah, so evolution doesn't disprove God. At all. C certainly, 100%. Good. The problem with evolution, obviously, though, for a lot of theists, is that it undermines the um, creation story. It can. So I, I like this guy. I mean, the, he's got his head screwed on right. This is exactly the point. This is now the third time he's put his finger right in it. Lovely reasoning, perfect. I mean, Eve. So that he came from two people, which doesn't follow the evolution standard. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, what I do is I first establish why we believe in God, why you believe the. N no, you don't. that is wrong. He's contradicting himself. 
He's constantly saying, you need to believe in God. You need to, be, you need to accept that there's a creator. That's the first thing. This is premise. You need to accept that there's a creator. And once you've accepted that, then you receive guidance. Then the, then the rest happens. And this is what the Quran says. I mean, if you look up the word belief in, in, in the Quran, I think it's 1,500 uh, something times. It's amazing how many times it, it appears there. And it, it, it's a premise. You first believe, then you get the rest. Otherwise, it doesn't work. The Quran is true. Then there's a conflict between the human origin and what's uh, in the Quran in terms of creation and what science is saying. And the way I would resolve that is I would say, in the Quran, God says that Adam is a miracle like Jesus is a miracle. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Jermaine, right? If Jesus is alive today and he's walking around, okay, and we took out his DNA, scientists, would they say he came from a virgin birth or would they say he's a normal human being? Tough question. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna look at um, other people's DNA. They're gonna look up the DNA of Mary, and they're gonna say that's the mother. Then they're gonna look for the closest genetic similarity from her family, which is gonna be a man, and they're gonna say that's the father. Even though theoretically, God can do a miracle. So for us, I don't understand the reasoning. They have the same problem in Islam, where according to the Quran. You have Isa and, and Adam, by the way, who are both created from dust. And then there's a contradiction because Isa is then created through Mary, not from dust, but by an angel blowing into her vagina. And this has the same problem, that it's a virgin birth. Adam is a miracle, but it doesn't mean we can discover it using science. And the thing is, what's important to, to know is this. This new atheist narrative, but I know you're not a new atheist. <laughs> this new atheist. There is no difference between a new and an old atheist or an ancient or whatever. It's just that people have always been who did not believe that gods exist. It's just that at the moment we have people who are more vocal because I'm allowed to say this without, well, in this country. If I go to Saudi Arabia and I, I go and, and I say I'm an atheist, um, there's a, a, you know, a good chance that I will be killed. Same in Pakistan. So there are places, uh, if, if I go and I openly say, look, I'm an atheist and, and the, the Quran is nonsense, I will be killed. So in other places like here I can say this and people don't really care and because I am allowed to say this I will say this because it doesn't make sense to believe anything that it says about Islam in the Quran and that is why I challenge Muslims to show me something that is that makes sense and they can't and this is now what he calls the new atheists the vocal people who dare criticize our holy book well tough tucky tough tucky really if your book says nonsense, I'm sorry, I didn't write it. It's not my fault. The new atheist narrative that evolution undermines design, undermines God, this is not something which makes any sense. I don't know any atheists that say that. I don't, I don't, I don't know where he gets this from. I don't know a single atheist who says that uh, evolution undermines God. It doesn't. It just undermines the claim that human beings were created manufactured, handcrafted by a god, by a supernatural entity. And this is the problem, because here in this world, in this reality, we, we have a set of rules. Now what they're doing is they're saying, well, we are suspending the set of rules by placing our supernatural entity outside of this universe. But if this entity, the supernatural entity outside of the universe, interacts with something here, in this, inside our universe, in our area, in our set of rules, we should be able to detect it. And we can then test it. And if you claim that there is an interaction and we can't test it, we can't detect it, I'm sorry, there's a very good chance that this does not exist. Um, I mean, you I mean, um, I mean, so, 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 I mean, so evolution from, a, from that standpoint, it's obviously it talks about the um, it doesn't. Every, so it's more to do with um, abiogenesis. Abiogenesis, I believe, is the origin of life. It's origin of life, but um, evolution is how things came to be, how the progression of life. Yeah. So how how, how single organisms? You know your stuff. Yeah, I watch evolution. Yes, he knows his stuff. Subur, you don't, unfortunately. 
yeah, so I don't, I don't agree with that theory at all. Um, it was just on the mango, one percent. It just tells us how we got here. It doesn't tell us what the origin, origin is, how, how that started. So there's a lot of things behind that. There's no, there's no proof of evidence. I don't think there will be to be Okay. Yeah. And the thing is, God is somebody, God, sorry, God as a concept is something which cannot be negated using evolutionary theory, physics theory, or any other theory. And the most important thing for us to realize is that ultimately... Hang on. That, that's, not, that's not true. Because you cannot detect a God itself. So you, you see the effect, you see the, uh, the, the ripples, you see the results, you see the interaction. So the, the claim is that, for example, God created mountains on this planet. But if we look at the way that mountains look on this planet, it's very different than the way that it is claimed in the Quran. So the Quran is wrong when compared to reality. So if we look at the way that God apparently, allegedly says, I created mountains by putting them on top of the crust, and we do not see mountains that are set on top of the crust, then there's something wrong. So we can use science, we can use um, all, all the different um, branches of science to verify the claims in the Quran which are saying we attribute these things to a God. And then we can say, well, no, they are wrong. You cannot attribute this to this God. So there is maybe not a direct way, but an indirect way. The same thing as I see, if, if I see a white line in the sky that gently curves, I see, aha, this is a contrail. So there must have been a plane there. So the same thing we should see with a God. And if we can test the contrail and we can, we can measure the temperature, the contents, the, the aerosols and so on, then we know what, the, what, what it was. We can even tell you what kind of, um, of fuel, whether it was A1 jet or something, that was, that was being burnt here. Because we know the components. We can analyze it. So we should be able to do the same thing for a god, and we can't. So indirectly, science can show, nope, no gods. Science can go hand in hand with God. How? Science is an... No, science cannot go hand in hand with God. Science is about facts. Gods are about faith. They are totally, totally the opposite. Explanation attempt to explain how the world works. It doesn't mean it gets rid of why. How and why are two different things. So for example, I can explain how this camera works. This camera works by um, this particular mechanism, this electrical circuit, but by explaining how the camera works, does that mean there's no design of the camera? No. So that's how and why in terms of science. What's your thoughts on that? So this goes to the The watchmaker analogy is, 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 is also good. I want to say strong as the Kalam cosmological argument. <laughs> oh, this guy is good. I love it. He is so good. He's really sharp, and I love it. <laughs> I don't know if you've actually heard this. I'm sorry, uh, because I'm listening attentively. He, he actually immediately uh, realized that he's talking about the watchmaker argument. All right? This is how he, he very, very quickly identified it. So very quick. So lovely listening to people like this who are really jacked up and, and with it and, and can immediately react. Beautiful. Is that, it makes an exception for gods, because obviously then God doesn't have a creator, does he? So then, what created gods? Um, and a lot of people then say, well, God is a tongue, God never had a creator. But then for me, um, from a philosophical perspective, it creates problems because, for example, that, um, Islamically, God is um, omnipotent and he's omniscient, so he knows everything. Um, so, uh, so if, if a, a creator has a creator and a creator has a creator and it all leads to God, then where did God get this information from? Yeah, so this is the problem. This is the problem with the infinite regress, right? So the question, who designed the designer? The first thing about the question is, is that it doesn't de it doesn't deny a designer. All it does is it asks us, what is the nature of the designer? Is the designer designed or undesigned? That's all it does. Okay. Now we as Muslims, we would say the design. The no, 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 no. Okay, it doesn't matter. There, there, there are the other implications. Okay, whatever. The designer is undesigned. The designer is um, uh, without, without cause. Now, philosophically, we can support this. How? Because if you have an infinite regress of past events, you never have a beginning. So if the past, if the past went back forever, we'll never have this conversation. That's the way we would address it. But this also shows the limits of philosophy, because like you said, kalam, design, contingency, these can prove to us that it makes sense there's some creator. But it does not go an inch to who the creator is, what the creator wants, what the purpose of life is. So I want to end upon another point. No, it doesn't. It just says it could be. 
It just says there's a possibility and we can't exclude it. That's all. It doesn't say there is a creator, which would indicate that there is some sort of an um, intelligent agent or, or, or somebody with a will or with, with intentions or something that will demand things. No. All, all that it says that if we allow this, then the, it, it allows for the possibility of something being the initial agent or whatever you want to call it um, that somehow led to this. It could be a catalyst converter. It could be anything. I want to ask you about, you know, you're 40 now, close to 40 years old, and obviously life goes past very quickly, right? What do you think about the question of the meaning or the purpose of life? Is that something that bothered you throughout your life? <laughs> okay, he, he realizes he can't catch him uh, because he knows too much about nature. And every argument that he throws at him, he throws right back and it puts it, lands right in front of his feet, totally, utterly destroyed. So he realizes he can't go anywhere, so he goes on to the next page of his script and now goes on to purpose. Uh, this guy is so sly and so deceptive. So, I mean, a life question is one of the biggest questions um, um, that we have. Um, so, the, the meaning of life for me is it's, it's, it's hard to pin down because obviously, from an atheistic perspective, there isn't really an answer. Um, you, could say, you could say the answer is just to reproduce, just to live and die. That could, that, that could be one of the answers. It's not very satisfying. <laughs> exactly, it's not satisfying, but that doesn't necessarily prove it to be wrong either. Yeah, of course. Just because it's satisfying and there's a more satisfactory answer out there, that doesn't mean that everyone should adopt that answer yeah. necessarily. Yeah. That doesn't mean that answer is correct, which is the, um, which the idea is that um, we should worship God to attain Jenna and, and eternal paradise. Which to me also sounds a lot more yeah. interesting. Like but we have to look at the evidence for it. Huh? You have to look at the evidence for it. Exactly, this is the problem for me. So, so the, the question is meaning of life. It's a very, it's a very problem actually. I'm, I'm just taking every day as it goes, to be honest. Um, like I said to you, I want to know as many truth as possible and as many false things as possible. Sure. Um, okay. Another thing for me is, is happiness. I'll, read, I'll just read the book right now about happiness. Um, um, how we measure happiness. Um, I want to be as happy as, as, as I can. I want to I I be as happy as I can and I want to make sure I reduce suffering as much as I can as well. I wish there were more guys like him. Are you aware of what the purpose of life in Islam is? So it's, to worship God? Yeah. So we believe, and like you said, firstly, I totally agree with you. Just because the atheist answer is not satisfying doesn't mean it's not true, right? So what, what it basically is, is this. The purpose of life in Islam is to worship God. Now, what does worship mean? Worship means your love, hope, uh, fear, submission, everything is for God. This life is a test, meaning we go through good and bad and everything. Okay, do I need to go into all the logical or illogical? No, I think we've done this enough. This is, this is just, you know, preaching. That's, that's it. There's nothing logical here. There's nothing here that makes sense. Everything we go through, ultimately, we're going to go back to God. And the most important thing, like I said in the beginning, is if you're sincere, then God will guide you. So it's not just got to do with philosophical arguments. Okay, so now already he's putting conditions on this. He's already saying, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I said earlier on that you will be guided, uh, but actually, no, you will not be guided uh, because, um, well, you need your, your heart needs to be softened, and now you need to be also sincere. So in other words, if you are not sincere, then you were created not sincere, and then this God will not give you guidance because he created um, you an insincere, so insincere, so and if you are not sincere, well, then you are not going to get guided, and then you're going to get punished for the way that God created you. And this does not make sense. From what I've seen, you're, well, you're very well read, you're very intelligent, you're understanding everything, but what I would advise you to do is to pray for guidance because ultimately it's... If somebody is intelligent and if somebody is educated, they will not pray because they realize that prayer doesn't work. Prayer does absolutely zilch. You might as well put, I don't know, put a toothbrush in front of you and say, dear toothbrush, please let me win the million jackpot or something. It's the same result as if you go and, and, and put your head on the floor and say, dear God, please let me win the million. Or if you say, dear God, I'm here, this is, this is your Abdul, and, and I am here for you, and please remember me when it comes to dishing out the virgins and the, and the wine, I'm, I'm right in, in, in front of the queue. That's all you can do. But everything in Islam only happens once you're dead. And Islam is quite clever, because the way that they said, well, we take the people who are gullible, who don't ask questions, who don't use critical thinking, and those are the ones that we want. And then we're going to tell them, yeah, but hang on, if you go and you fight for me and you die for me, this is going to be your biggest reward that you can get. 
and then you're going to get everything that an Arab nomad of the 7th century in the um, peninsula of Arabia would even think of. Because he will get wine, he will get virgin, something that is scarce in the desert of the Arabian Peninsula. And this is what they are promised. But you first need to believe, you first need to follow me, you first need to do... I'm going to ask you for some favors, though. The quid pro quo that we've heard with Trump so many times. This is exactly what Trump says. I need to ask you... I mean, well, you need to do me a favor, though, before you get all this. You first need to worship me. Show me that I am the biggest, greatest, that I am the most stable genius on this planet. And if you do that, then I'm going to reward you. But only once you're dead. Because <laughs> otherwise people would know that this is just a scam and this is just a, an empty box that you're getting. But so this is actually quite clever. It's, it's that connection with God which guides you. It's not philosophical arguments. That's my sort of last message I wanted to give you. I, I, I consider myself to be an honest person, a sincere person. I, 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 have, I have sincerely looked for answers. Like I said this earlier, I didn't plan to read the Quran myself and I'm not going to read the Bible. Because I don't want to reject a particular faith without giving it a good, you know, without, without giving it as much time and input as I can to understand these points yep. and, and, and see where it leads me. So, yep. so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. So good. Thank you. Um, so that's a copy of the Quran. That's, um, what's it called? A short verses from the Quran, that's evidence from what I spoke to you about before, why the Quran is the word of God. You, you see Hang on, if he's got a Quran there, which is the word of God, why would you need a book telling you that this is the word of a God if the book already tells you that it's the word of a book? So that, that it, it already shows how insincere this, this subur is. Because he is saying, well, the, the, the book is true, it was written by a God, and of, of course I believe it, but um, we, we still need to explain that this really is the word of a God, because the God who wrote the book himself didn't do such a good job, so we need to do a better job than this God to explain to people who don't see what this God was trying to do, who don't have this level of gullibility, who are still asking questions, we need to go and explain this as humans, because God couldn't do that. Because God is an incompetent fool who can't do these things and we humans have to jump in. And this is, this is the level of insincerity, this is the level of dishonesty, this is the scam that these people are pulling. That they are pretending that there's a book of God which is so eloquent, so great, and it says, the, the second line in the, in the Quran says, a book where there is no doubt. It tells you, I don't know, something like 60, 70 times that everything is explained, everything is detailed, everything is like beautifully laid out. But then humans will need to provide a book here or two or there to explain what it really says. It doesn't, that exclude, that's a, I don't know, this, this for me is already um, a knockout criteria. This would show me there is nothing correct here, there is nothing worth contemplating. This is just nonsense. I've seen some of these things already online about prophecies, about uh, pre There are no prophecies. There is not, there isn't, there's nothing in the Quran like this. <laughs> I don't know why they still go and spread these, these really, I mean, he knows that this, this is not true. He knows that. It's been debunked, refuted, rebutted, uh, ridiculed uh, so many times, and they're still spreading this nonsense. Observation about these things, that's in more detail. And if you have any more questions, I'll give you my number and we'll be in contact. Any last message you want to give to people watching? Um, no, I'd just say thank you, thank you for having the talk. Um, I really like the stuff that you do on your channel, keep doing it, it's really good. Um, I, I love the open dialogue that, that, um, that you have. And, um, and yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you very much, thank you very much. That's it? Yeah, that's it. So, um, let me see if I... All right. Not, not much value here, nothing new, just some old stuff, and, and we all know that this is nonsense. Okay, let's keep it at that. Thanks, guys. And listen, Muslims, please, if you find something that I'm saying that is wrong, show me that it's wrong, what is wrong, and show me what would be right. It's frightfully easy. But why can't you understand that there is something wrong in these claims? I don't understand it. All right, guys. See you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.